Hello everyone, this is Cholera SC bringing you a very special episode. This is my 400th video challenge, and I'm going to be facing none other than General Robert E. Lee Jadong uh, <laughs> in the Battle of Gettysburg. This is a first-person VOD of the game Sid Meier's Gettysburg, and let's listen to the briefing. I wish that you would ride over and, if anything serious is going on, attend to it. What's the name of that hill? I believe it is called Little Round Top, General. If the enemy get their guns up there, they could pour down a murderous fire upon our entire line. It appears General Sickles has advanced his corps away from the hill toward the beach orchard. Buford's cavalry is covering the flank, but I think he's pulled back to a fifth. Look there. See the glint of bayonets as our artillery fires overhead? The Rebs are forming to attack! Move quickly, Warren. We must hold that round top hill at all costs. I'll send the Fifth Corps to help out. You must hold this location at the end of the battle. This is your best brigade. There'll be some more infantry coming up. Okay, for those of you who are not that familiar with American history or uh, need another briefing, um, and by the way, I am facing this scenario against the hardest difficulty level, which is Robert E. Lee. Of course, uh, he was the um, the supreme commander of all the Confederate forces by the end of the war, and uh, certainly one of the greatest generals in 19th century history and in American history, uh, fighting for the Confederacy, of course. Um, for those of you who want a little primer, this is the Battle of Gettysburg in the second year of the American Civil War. Um, one of the major turning points of the war, uh, of course, uh, not to give too many spoilers, but the Union won. It's probably the first major victory of the war and a crucial victory in this battle. Um, when the South, basically, at this point, was invading the North, um, it was in Pennsylvania, and, uh, and Robert E. Lee was trying to make a gambit to destroy several major cities in the north, or perhaps just threaten them. Uh, Baltimore and Washington were possibilities. And uh, in any case, this was the battle where the two forces managed to meet, and this is the second day of the battle. The scenario is this. Uh, General Longstreet, one of um, General Lee's top lieutenants, a, a very, very smart general, had discovered the Union line's left flank. And this is the extreme left flank of the Union line. Uh, one of the Union generals, Sickles, made a mistake by overextending himself into Devil's Den, as we see here in the middle. And uh, this allowed Longstreet to be able to walk around the Union left flank. I'll be explaining the mechanics of this game in a second. Um, but basically, in this scenario, we need to hold, as a Union, the left, very left flank of the Union Reporting Army, general. and I'm going to be needing all my troops because I'm facing the hardest, uh, hardest um, general here that you can possibly face, Robert E. Lee Jadong. And the reason I'm relating, comparing him to uh, Lee Jadong, is because I like to think of um, uh, of the Confederates in this game as more like the Zerg, uh, and not to insult any Southerners, but um, it's it just from the way they fight in this battle, it's it's more. Uh, appropriate, I guess, and, and to think of the turns as the Union, as I'll explain later. Um, in any case, as the battle get heats up, uh, I'm going to be just trying to tell you guys some mechanics of this game. Basically, how this game works is you have set battles, and uh, your units are divided into regiments. Each of the smaller flags are a regiment of soldiers. Regiments um, have different amounts of morale, uh, and it depends on whether they're veteran regiments, like this, I just clicked, this is a crack regiment, the best type there is. They have uh, five morale slots. In any case, uh, the battles don't end up with units destroying each other entirely. What happens is the goal is really to demoralize your enemy regiments to get them into flanking positions where your men will deal both more casualties and more morale hits. And uh, when a certain unit has, or a certain regiment has taken too much morale damage, it will disintegrate and it will be routed. Um, of course, each hundred casualties counts for, uh, well, actually what I'm saying, trying to say is each victory point counts for 100 casualties, so dealing casualties to the enemy is very important also, um, and being able to deal more casualties obviously is, is very essential. In this scenario, as in uh, both scenarios I'll be playing, uh, Little Round Top and Pickett's Charge, the Union has a massive superiority in artillery. Um, they kind of work like siege tanks uh, in StarCraft in that they're very powerful from long range, but they're utterly useless in close range. They're like sieged up siege tanks. Um, uh, because once the uh, cow infantry infantry manage to get close up to them, they disintegrate instantly, they become routed, and they have Sir, absolutely no defense. In any case, notice that I'm actually sending uh, D. Trobriand's brigade um, south uh, and to the east in order to protect my flank. I know they're going to be attacking Little's Round Top because I've played this scenario before. And uh, look at this, this is Vincent's brigade moving up. Uh, Vincent's brigade includes the 20th Maine. Uh, commanded by Joshua Chamberlain, Colonel Chamberlain uh, from Maine, um, a professor before the war, and he is uh, 
very famous in this battle for holding one of the greatest stands in in military history, holding the very left of the Union line uh, hanging in the air, and he will be faced with several large challenges throughout the war. Uh, several medals of honors were, were awarded during that battle, and basically he managed to hold off with just one regiment. Um, several Confederate regiments that are trying to flank him from every direction, several times his size, uh, with a very, very powerful uh, defense there. And in fact, at the end of the battle, when several Confederate charges had failed, he was running low on ammunition. In fact, he had, didn't have enough ammunition for his rifles it, to hold off another charge. It would, instead, he pulled off a brilliant counter charge. He ordered his men to fix bayonets, and he rushed down Little Round Top and caught the Confederates completely by surprise uh, as they were mounting up for another charge, and hence won the battle for the day. Afterwards, the Confederates could not muster another charge, could not muster enough men to uh, do another charge. So we'll see in this simulation if uh, Vincent's brigade manages to live up to heroes. But right now, I'm facing problems on my left side uh, in Devil's Den. I most likely will not be able to hold Devil's Den because, like the briefing said, this is Sickles Corps in a, uh, an unfortunate forward position where it's just going to get surrounded by the superior Confederate force. Um, by the way, in general, Union forces are less... Uh, they're larger Union forces. They have more men, but they are much less experienced in that there are more, tr um, there's four levels of experience. There's green forces with only two morale blocks. Uh, here we have a veteran force with four. There's trained forces which have three and crack forces which have five. Most of the, um, most of the Confederate uh, regiments are veteran or crack regiments and hence they're much able, much more able to handle uh, charges. Chargers are basically when they rush up into melee combat and uh, basically decide with more morale and uh, better generalship uh, manages to take the day and the other side will either rout or go into a headlong retreat which is uh, very dangerous in this game. Looks like I'm trying to, sub trying to summon as many men as possible, hold Devil's Den uh, as long as possible while Vincent's Brigade gets up to Little Round Top and holds that at all costs. Devil's Den is not essential. Note that it's only five victory points. My men are getting surrounded though, so I don't want that many of my troops to get routed. Um, so I'm going to have to force to be forced to retreat here. Of course, the men uh, automatically retreat if they suffered enough morale damage, unless you press hold, which is what I'm doing here. What hold does is make uh, a regiment fight to the last man. When you fight to the last man, um, if you if you lose the battle or if you suffer enough casualties, you don't just retreat as a regiment. You get routed, which means that your regiment disintegrates and your men are basically out of the fight forever uh, for the rest of the battle, unless it's a very long time and they have a chance to rally, which won't happen in any of these scenarios. Um, so basically, I'm trying to send in as many men as possible to breach this gap. Uh, what happens is Robert E. Lee Jadong has a very, very uh, strong ability to find flanks in, in that he surrounds my troops, brings his best regiments to the center, and brings large regiments to the flanks of my troops, um, it, which allows them to deal more damage. Um, of course, this game has no macro, it's all micro, and uh, what happens, as, uh, as was in real life, if you have uh, all your troops in line formation, as was the case in the Civil War, um, if you manage to attack from the side, all of your bullets will run down the lengthwise uh, cross-section of the enemy regiment, and hence, even if you uh, attack in volley and you don't have... I mean, every shot is not aimed. Not every shot is aimed. Uh, you'll still be able to inflict more casualties because if you miss one, the bullet will fly down the rank and manage to hit more. So it's very, very dangerous uh, sort of situation to be flanked. And also, you lose more morale because your men feel like they're being surrounded on all sides. In any case, it uh, looks like Ward's brigade, the most leftmost brigade, has pretty much disintegrated. I've sent in Vincent's brigade now, and they're going to be needing to hold the top of the little round top. By the way, the very right side, as we see here, is the uh, 20th main. So far, it's not fought at all because uh, the most of the battle is still occurring in the Devil's Den, which was a collection of rocks, basically, um, that were in between the two lines. Oh yeah, by the by the way, the general progress of this entire battle was that after the first day, uh, the Confederates held the western side of Gettysburg and the Union held the eastern side. The Union was on a ridge called Cemetery Ridge, which was higher and in a better position to shell the Confederate ridge.